I'm Rachel and I work in uh, University College London in the chemistry department um, and I've just I started my postdoc about a year ago. I did my PhD in uh, biophysics. I'm Jean-Philippe Perria from the uh, University uh, of Lyon. I'm Isabelle Daniel. I'm a professor of mineralogy at the geology department in the University of uh, Lyon, just like Jean-Philippe. I was a geologist, but so both geology and chemistry are linked um, well, by many things, but what I'm interested in is high pressure. So obviously pressures inside the earth relate very well to, into geology. And also I'm very interested in high pressure biology and that kind of research. I'm doing the postdoc with uh, Rachel in UCL and we are working uh, with uh, live bacteria. We're investigating, you know, not, not, too, sh not too shabby, the, the limits of life. We want to know how high in pressure can life survive? Does temperature have an effect? We know it does, but how does that af affect pressure all at the same time? So looking at this very holistically. Um, so that's the main aim of our research, is we're taking whole cells and applying lo a load of techniques, um, including synchrotron, radiation. The purpose of uh, our experiment is to get a better understanding of the uh, chemical composition and structure of the Earth's uh, upper mantle. It's uh, mainly composed of uh, mineral that we call olivine. It undergoes uh, phase transformation to high pressure minerals that we call uh, wasleyite and ringwoodite. So the idea here at uh, ESRF is to uh, compress and uh, eat uh, a sample at the condition of the Earth's interior and uh, look at this uh, transformation using the uh, X-rays. And I'm here this week to help uh, Jean-Philippe with his experiment. This is the actual size of the sample that's in there. It is about one, a little less than one millimeter in diameter and this is about 500 micron in height. The sample is contained into this uh, small octahedron. It's really at the, at the center. So the pressure will be applied by the press. And you see the cubes are put together perfectly so that it perfectly sits onto the cubes. The assembly will be placed between uh, six hard steel uh, anvils. The incoming X-rays will go through the uh, module to a small gap and the diffraction signal will be recorded. And uh, will help us to see the structure of the sample in here. This is the assembly that we took out of the large volume press earlier today. We get really interesting uh, results uh, just uh, yesterday night. I wish uh, to have uh, more beam time to here. <laughs> The only problem, yes, is just like it's quite difficult to get proposal accepted because everyone wants access to this kind of large-scale facility. The panel can judge if your scientific idea is good enough. Not all the proposals are accepted. When, you know, your proposal is accepted, it's really, really a big win. You know, you are lucky when you have the beam time. Life at Sicrontron uh, is uh, a bit uh, exhausting because we are working overnight to optimize uh, the, the beam time. I am looking forward to having dinner outside <laughs> this compound. After three weeks of beam time, you know, you say, you know, where is my life? You know, I love outside of the beam. Where my life? life outside of the beam. You are tired, but you are uh, at the same time really excited. I mean, at least I'm really excited every time that I'm doing an experiment. Grenoble is a very nice place to live if you are a fan of hiking, of outdoor sports, of a mountain. We are in Grenoble, which is a very busy town with world-class universities, with other European institutes like the ILL and the EMBL, uh, which are our neighbours. And we benefit enormously from them like they benefit from us. So it's a very young city, it's a very young town, and that is particularly attractive for the younger people who would like to come to the ESRF in order to uh, work here and learn uh, as a scientist how to use a synchrotron.